Why did I come back to Dirty Laundry Live Series 2? Because I don't have another job. I guess it's fate that I'm back. I hosted it last year and there was an option in my contract for a second series. So it's not fate, it was planned. The thing I love most about Dirty Laundry Live is working with exciting young talent. And Marty. I love this show. It's part of who I am. And I love the party afterwards. That's actually who I am. <laughs> Australia, I'm home for Dirty Laundry Live Series 2. After Series 1, I stayed at home and laid on the couch. So I'm always at home. <laughs> The show that's obsessed with celebrity and how it's sold to us. It's Nine Dirty. Mm. Since last season, there's been a change of government and hello to the new gang, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Tony, if you're watching, I love your work. Hope you love mine. <laughs> During our break, I followed the Royals on their 10-day trip around Australia and wasn't it a rare privilege to see a couple of English tourists leave before their visas expired? <laughs> but my favourite story has been the billionaire biffo between James Packer and David Gingell. Yeah. The man who's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The man whose casinos create misery on a global scale versus the man who's responsible for force-feeding us endless episodes of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> I'm quite happy they punched each other in the face. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. Speaking of Two and a Half Men, CBS just announced it will finish up in the US at the end of the year. Oh. oh. Which means it will only play on Channel 9 for another 15 years. <laughs> Dirty Laundry Live is all about image management and a man who has really balled that up this week is Treasurer Joe Hockey. <laughs> Joe was seen chomping on cigars and dancing in his office before he delivered his bad news budget. It's strange that Joe was smoking before the budget. Normally people light a smoke up after they've fucked you. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying yourself, Tony. <laughs> this is Dirty Laundry Live! <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Oh, great to be back, Moo, mate. I, I felt like just walking off then, I've done my job. Uh, <laughs> Brooke, I have missed you. I've missed you so bad. Oh. I've missed you so bad. Oh, I have you missed you. You're looking pretty, man. Like, what's going on? Have you, your dimples I've, deepened or something? I've, or? I've shaved. You've shaved. Yeah. It's so nice to see more of your face. I'm, I've shaved <laughs> my back. <laughs> <laughs> And I've got to say, red is really your colour too. It's orange. I meant red is your colour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does that mean? I got the pity vote. I yeah. got the pity vote. It is. It's, it's very Thank nice. You. You, and you're looking a little bit pumped too. Have you been working I'm out? A little bit pumped. Your guns? Yeah. Have you been? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, lifting luggage, getting ready to come down here, primed and ready for right. season two of Dirty Laundry. It's going to be big. Hello, Marty. Hello, Moon Man. Welcome back. Nice to see you, Zoe Coombs Ma. G'day, mate. G'day, G'day mate. <laughs> Just keeping a bit in the tank there. Yeah. And welcome to Tosh Greenslade, our virgin on the panel tonight. You will know him from... <laughs> Mad as hell. Well, you do a pretty... Are you, are you feeling OK? Are you feeling yeah, good? I kind of wish you hadn't told people that I've never had sex, though. <laughs> okay. That's a secret. He just oh. said you hadn't had sex live on television. That's yeah. Did he? OK. And yeah. we're going to take Blame care of that later in the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
that's going to be fun, Tosh. That's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, kiss me. You break him, you buy him. If you want to send us some love, you can do so on Twitter and Facebook. It's been a while since we've played, so remember, this is a quiz and you're playing for yourselves. And tonight there's a big prize for yeah. whoever wins. It's a dance lesson at Joe Hockey's dance studio, <laughs> the Budget Boogaloo. So, <laughs> let's go. Tosh, first question to you. For one point, tell me this. Jay-Z is famous for having 99 problems. What's his latest one? Is it, it's, it's, how do you pronounce it? It's like a genital. Her name is like a genital. Is it Solange? It is Solange, Solange. Majora, that's right. <laughs> Sister-in-law Solange Knowles <laughs> attacked him in a lift. A uh, genital. A it's genital. Like well, I'm not it's sure. Like there's one there's one the like footage and geez. it is very good yeah, footage. Yeah. She's having a real shot moment. There's Jay-Z on the, on the left there. Look, and she looks, kicks, oh, kicks, look at the protecting I... his salon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining him being attacked by a giant genital in a lift. <laughs> well, That's the video uh, we'd all like to wouldn't see. Wouldn't be the first time Jay-Z's <laughs> been attacked by a giant genital. Uh, really? really? I don't know. What am I talking <laughs> about? <laughs> I don't know anything about that Let's or have... any of that stuff. <laughs> Let's have a look at that footage again because it's excellent footage. It was leaked from the hotel lift. Ooh. And I think that she actually takes the Met Ball actually literally because her Jeez. feet Met Ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's a when very I... long fight. It's it a long goes fight. on for a long time. Yeah. When, I, when, I first, when I first saw that, I didn't realise that Beyonce was was in the lift. I thought they must have got in the lift and someone else was already in the lift because she, she did... She doesn't do anything. She did nothing to, to yeah. stop what Why not? not? What, what happened in why the lift? Would you, mm. Why would you get involved? Why would you... What, what's she going to do? She, then it's... she might be scared of that sister. Solange might have form <laughs> and she's like... He must have done something pretty drastic, though. If, if a sister's going to go you like that in a lift, it's got to be very serious. I think what happened was he, he farted, or as they say... <laughs> As they say in the industry, released yeah. a single. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like when you get in a lift, you pick your poo corner in case the thing breaks down. <laughs> and it's like and they pick the same and corner. And they pick the same corner. And, and she's, she's like, like, get out of there! <laughs> yeah. And he starts releasing back-to-back -back singles. We're in deep shit. Yeah. <laughs> that is not. He is prolific. Uh, when he released it from his album. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chair. You're off the mark, Zoe. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. And this question is for you. In today's news, what of Nicole Kidman's did critics generally eviscerate? What of Nicole Kidman's did they generally eviscerate? Oh, big words. Uh, <laughs> well, that, I don't know what. Um, I don't. Uh, was it? Her, was it her? Do you know what eviscerate means, Marty? Fate? I think it means chew. <laughs> no, it That's means. Masticate. It, oh shit! It I was means, close. <laughs> It means to gut or skin. Oh, that's right, it does yes. too. Uh, baby? No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. well, metaphorically, maybe her baby. Yeah. Nicole was at Cannes for the <laughs> premiere of Grace of Monaco, a biopic based on the yeah. life of Grace Kelly. The film got an absolute panning from the critics, but it wasn't the only thing drawing criticism. Speculation was rife on social media mm. that Nicole has had some more work done. Oh. Whoa! Whoa. Photos of her on the red carpet yeah. showing her face to be fuller, her cheeks plumped up, and her forehead yeah. as smooth as a fridge door. <laughs> Where do you go to, to... what? Who do you go to to say, I want my face to look like a rat's face? Like, who... What, what surgeon lets you do that? Do you reckon they've got a flick book in the foyer that you just sit there and go through? That you know, rat. Like, oh, I want the yes. rat. That's yeah. pointy. So, as an actress, why would you do that? Why would you paralyse you your face? Why, well, you can't. Do you think I need to? You need some work, no, definitely. Yeah. Stunning, bro. Oh, Marty, stop it. It's Get easy, Tosh. Mate. He's the one that needs it tonight. There's a lot of sexual energy on this panel tonight. <laughs> but you, she can't emote. She, no, she can't... it is difficult. It is very, very difficult. Yeah. 
But uh, traditionally it was always her forehead that people sort of talked about. Now they're talking about her cheeks. Well, it was the freckles to sign off with. That's right, it was too. Yeah. Yeah. She's still she had a beautiful band she of freckles. She hasn't had any work done, doesn't she? Doesn't she Does still? She? She she's taking us all for fools. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's an excellent actor. Very angry about it. Um, like she, she still says like she hasn't had work done, doesn't she? Mm. Well, no. I think it's a bit of a slippery Genetic slope. You have a little bit done and mm. then something doesn't match on your face and so yeah. you have your lips done. Yeah. I haven't had any work done. I just look awesome. Yeah, it's just the little, it's the little nicks behind the ear that give it away. Yeah, that's but right. I've had this thing pulled time. tight. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, you can't see this, but there's actually a ponytail. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just skin. That's actually true, though. There's this new thing that they're inserting that goes into, and it's like it's got screws that you tighten, yeah. and it actually, like, I didn't realise this existed. And Different they do, levels. they're doing it with bras now, where they can like literally put a silicone band into your chest. Yeah. And Rib, bolt it to your rib cage, and, and you can tweak it. You can that tweak is, it all you like. That is some of the best news I've heard tweak all day. <laughs> I've just got some breaking news. This is live. Mm. Uh, the hotel yeah. has sacked the person that leaked the footage of oh. the Jay Z fight. So, oh, it's sad. I he's think uh, that's probably fair he's enough. probably very rich right now, so that's okay. Well, it's yeah. He's probably just done it for a bit of fun, and now he's got to go and find his five bucks an hour somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's okay. a good video. It's a, it's a good video. You shouldn't be punished for releasing it that. It looks like an X-ray video. If I hadn't seen that, I would be worse Absolutely. off. Absolutely. We should, we, should, we should hire him. Let's move along. I'm excited because it's time for Eye on Bieber. Yeah. Well, since last we checked in, our favourite little male lesbian has been busy spreading his scandals across the globe like a shirtless pandemic. He was carried up the Great Wall of China by bodyguards. Yeah. <laughs> In South Korea, in South Korea, he chose to assault a tour manager rather than put on a top. Oh, then in Japan, he offended both South Korea and China all over again by visiting a shrine honouring war criminals. What a dude! <laughs> there he is praying. In South America, Bieber was snapped by a Brazilian sex worker while he had a nap. Mm. You're not getting your money's worth there, buddy. <laughs> and in the US, he was arrested for speeding whilst in his yellow Lamborghini. Who wouldn't? He threw a carton of eggs at his neighbour's house. Yeah. And this is the piece de resistance. He rubbed a fan's smartphone on his dicky. Oh. <laughs> and just this week, it was reported that Bieber is being investigated in connection with an attempted robbery at a mini golf course. <laughs> What, what, what was he What stealing? did he steal? <laughs> I don't know. A tiny set of clubs? <laughs> yeah. I think he was trying to steal a child's phone. Yeah. Yes, Biebs has had a full sketch, so it's understandable he forgets some of the smaller details of his global assault. Here's a question for you, Brooke. What entire continent did Bieber completely forget about recently? What entire continent did young Justin... You know this. I'm sad to say. Yes, it is. And uh, I can tell by your patriotic tears there that you're a little bit upset. Right. During a recent court hearing, you was asked about recent movements. Well, that brought the mood down a bit, didn't it? <laughs> and he can't remember coming to this country. He insulted customs officers. He graffitied a hotel on the Goldie, That's which right. is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> he convinced stadiums of Australian tweens to violently lower their standards. Yeah. And he's forgotten about us. He forgot about our beautiful country. He did. He did. It's really Damn you, Bieber! <laughs> How could you forget about us? He is one of the great dead shits, though, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> One of the very great dead shits. Truly, he's, he's, in, he's moved into a pantheon of dead shits yeah. that is uh, hard to sort yeah. of put him in company. Yeah, that's, there's not a galaxy of dead shits. No. There's only a few. There's a few mm. real top-end dead shits. Uh, the canon. Can uh, you name another one that's up there with him? Oh, well, so many spring to mind. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't throw Rove under the bus at this stage. <laughs> He's a personal friend of the show. Yeah, no, he's a great guy. I'm just he's a very good man. Very tiny man too. Um, <laughs> so clearly, stop hanging shit on our friends. <laughs> that was I on Bieber. <laughs> Tosh. According to Woman's Day, which workmates recently engaged in a bit of hot and steamy bandana tugging? Mm. Uh, that, mm. that, that is. 
Is it Joel and Kylie? It is Joel and Kylie, oh, that's right. Nice. The voice has come around again, and so the voice juggernaut just starts spreading these rumours about a possible on-air dalliance, or are they hard at it? Let's take a little vote. <laughs> are, they, are they banging or not? No, oh, there's a big chance. Or, I Allegedly, my hand's in the air. <clears throat> right. You yeah, say that's yes. What I think. You say Kylie has come home and she is yearning. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said. Well, uh, well, it's not exactly home maybe. soil, is it? Right. Well, <laughs> it's clearly something that uh, The Voice does. Last year they started the same rumours about Delta Seal and Delta. And Seal, that's right. And, uh, it's very emotional. Yeah. I mean, you know, most of the people coming through that door have some pretty horrific backstory. Mm. And they're achieving Are you these... talking about the judges or the singers? <laughs> <laughs> you talking about Ricky Martin? <laughs> well, he's, he, he did good, that kid. Um, but yeah, he's got a backstory. A big one. <laughs> <laughs> big backstory. But don't you think it's, it could be a little bit like funeral sex? You know how people tend um, to get it on at wakes? So, you know, yeah, they're emotional, they're full of grog. It happens, man. So, so as, that... as your career is dying, you start to put <laughs> out. No, I'm just suggesting that there is, there is a circumstantial possibility that the same kind of elements are at play on yeah. the um, voice set. No one else still on this one? Yeah, I can tell. No. No. I'm interested to listen to you. So, why do international stars sign up to shows like The Voice in Australia? To explain, here's Greg Larson. Hi, I'm Greg Larson. I'm an expert. There's my degree. Now, what do all these people have in common? Joel Madden, Brian McFadden, Jason Derulo, Mel B, Naomi Campbell, Jerry Halliwell, Seal, Paula Abdul, Ronan Keating, Kelly Rowland and Ricky Martin. Well, apart from them all having blocked me on Twitter, they were all once showbiz titans. Masters of their crafts, roll gold stars with the world at their feet. So what the hell are they doing here? Former idols, now languishing in the twilight zone between misery and failed dreams. They've become talent show judges. Being in a talent show used to mean <laughs> blacking up and getting gonged off by Red Simons. I myself was actually in a talent show as a child. I didn't win my father's love, but I did win this radical yo-yo. Check this out. <laughs> Can I get one fucking thing right in my life? <laughs> Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> These days, you wail a Miley song until some millionaire megastar waves their arms, cries, gives you a touchdown, does this, and says you're going to be a star. On The Voice, you even get to choose which judge you want to work with. Which is funny, because in 1989, a judge told me which parent I had to live with. <laughs> that one wrong, didn't he, Dad? <laughs> Mariah Carey reportedly earned $18 million for one season of American Idol. J-Lo picked up 17.5. Britney scored 15 mil for her role in X Factor, and they even slung Keith Urban 5 million bucks. Kylie was offered a million pounds to stay on The Voice UK, whereas Will I Am gets about half that amount. Back home, Kyle Sanderlands reportedly did Australian Idol for a Kit Kat Chunky and a three litre Coke. A-list celebrities with global appeal can travel the world picking up these massive paychecks in many different markets. Milk from the teat of this talent show cash cow congeals into the gap left by an artist's declining sales. Sure, these superstars will humiliate themselves, but that doesn't matter. They think Australia is separated from the real world by an ocean so vast that they'll never get found out in their own country. Because the internet couldn't possibly reach. This leaves celebrities free to massively sell out. But it's not just about the money. As experts in their field, they also have some useful advice to offer. Now, it's, it's time to go to different places. I believe in that. And I, and I really hope we can, we can go there. Hmm, worth thinking about. A talent show can even act as a defibrillator to the gasping corpse of a judge's career. After judging The Voice, Ricky Martin scored his first Australian top 10 hit in eight years. He, Ryan McFadden and Seal have all toured nationally after talent show appearances. Seal in particular was embraced by Australians because black people from other countries are cool. A bonus for these stars is that the shows are often so dull that the judges themselves become the headlines. 
simply being in the news prolongs their status as famous celebrities. The epitome of human achievement. So for a star nearing the end of their career, the choice to appear as a talent show judge is as easy as pushing a button with their foot. So if washed up celebrities become talent show judges, we must ask ourselves the question, what then becomes of washed up talent show judges? Your tea, Mr. Larson. <laughs> By the way, if you can't be the part, look the part. Shut up, you're not my dad, just do the line, please. I want $10,000 to do that line. Do the line. <laughs> yeah. Back to you, Lawrence. Thank you very much, Greg. Greg Larson, our resident expert, and he'll be making an appearance most weeks. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? Yes, it was. And Mark man. Holden was there. He's actually practicing law now. He's a barrister, I, if you didn't know. I did know that, yes. Next, next question is for you. <laughs> This is live, isn't it? Certainly oh, yeah. is. Okay, let's keep going then. Uh, <laughs> next question is for you, Marty. I'm ready, mate. Take a look at this picture. Yeah. And who is this? Oh, Jesus. Um... It's a famous person that likes disguising himself because he hates paps. You could wear him to a wedding. <laughs> I could wear him to a wedding. You couldn't really. Well, you he, is, he, is he an Aussie? No, he's no. not. He plays Sherlock. Oh, Jude Law. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Neither Dr. That Watson. Homes. You're an imbecile. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, it's, it's Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, well, who would know that, mm. for Christ's sake? <laughs> the what? Sherlock star was out to lunch this week and wore this disguise to elude the paparazzi. He does have form, Cumberbatch. Yeah. Uh, he's not a huge fan, fan of the Paps. Here's a sign he held up in August last year when they photographed him leaving the set of Sherlock. It says, go photograph Egypt and show the world something important. And I think Benedict is right. Yeah. I think photographing Egypt is important. <laughs> is that, is that, is that, tr is that an actual photo? That is an actual photo of me look, in you Egypt. Look, you do look, you look, you look thinner, and I don't mean that in a bad way. But you mean you, it in a Photoshop way? I mean, no, I just mean you look thinner. You also look quite thinner. <laughs> yeah, that's not a real photo, Marty. That's, um, that's Photoshop. Oh, shit. And my, my head was put on somebody else's body. Okay. Okay. So I think these, these photos, or getting dressed up like this, actually make people more interesting. So mm. I, uh, I've got a game for you, oh, so good. let's play that. All right. Oh, okay, right. Don't, don't look okay. at the names on the back here. Mm. You've got to guess this one. First of all, Tosh, you can guess who that is, please. Is that, that's not Shia LaBeouf, is it? That's not him. That's not Shia LaBeouf, no. It's a uh, famous actor with a, quite a long nose poking through the bag there. You can... Long nose, big hands, oh, wrist he? bracelet. Gerard mm. Depardieu. Been shopping at no, he, uh, Mixer. He, no was, he started no. the graduate as a young man. Oh, oh Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman. It is Dustin Hoffman. Who oh. didn't know that was Dustin Hoffman? Yeah, I know. <laughs> there was a moment where I thought it was Rolf Harris, Moon Man, but it was Dustin Hoffman. Okay, I'm glad Rolf's name came up. So, um, <laughs> okay, who is this, Brooke? Who is this? Hmm. I, well, is it, is it Beyonce? No, it's not Beyonce. Is it? You're know. just going to name random black women? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just, that's just racist, yeah. really. That it's heading into that territory. Um, is it? <laughs> uh, I have no idea. It's that... Kim Kardashian. Yeah, is, is it? it? Yeah. Really? But you don't know what she looks like in real life anyway. It actually looks a little bit like Oprah Winfrey. Um, yeah. Okay, who's this? This is this is a tough one. Well, that's just ridiculous. Tosh, you, you know this gods? one. Come that's on. That's not the gods. No? Do you like no. the gods? Ryan Gosling? I don't mind the gods. I love the gods. Someone said it looked like English fast bowler Gladstone Smalls, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm it's right. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Right. This is the worst game ever, and Zoe, this is for you, this one. Sam Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look on the monitor down there. What about you, Marty? Do you want to...? Um, he likes driving and drinking tequila. Oh, it's Bloody Mel. It's Bloody Mel! <laughs> And that is a game we'll never play again. <laughs>
that the, best, was... the best disguise was when Nicole Kidman was dressed as that rat. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, 52-year-old George Clooney got engaged to his girlfriend, Amal Amaludin, a 36-year-old human rights lawyer, and she's a bit of all right, too. Yeah. So let's get the heat on the street from our resident showbiz reporter, Jimmy the Scoop. Thanks, Mr. Mooney. George Clooney was the wildest Casanova in Capital City. Now he's hitched with a hot filly who's 16 years younger. Will this gravity star fall to Earth? Or is it good night and good luck to his playboy ways? Let's hit the streets and get the scoop. What do you think about George Clooney getting married to a young doll who's a real sweet patootie? I think it's fantastic. Good luck to him. What do you think about young dames making whoopee with older men? Making what? What do you think about George Clooney getting married to a young dame who's a real hot tomato? Well, it's going to cost him. Ring-a-ding-ding! -ding. You think it's okay for a young woman to make whoopee with an older man? Oh, I've done it myself. How old? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. All of Australia will make me see that. He's 52 and she's 36. What do you think about that age difference? It's not a problem. Higher than 15 years? Definitely. 20? I'm not going any further. 25? You're getting too personal, Chips. They say that uh, age doesn't, uh, love doesn't have uh, has age in limit. I've never heard that saying before in my life, sir. George Clooney's a bit of a silver fox. You look like a bit of a silver fox. Can you make sure that pronunciation of that word is correct? A silver <laughs> fox? A fox? Oh, very good. <laughs> I the last 15 seconds with you. In seconds, is that a lot or a little? Uh, so my, in my day, it was a, a little. It was a little? Uh, it's still a little. Uh, you ever been with a puppet? <laughs> well, yes. yes. <laughs> Would you like to try? Um, depends. <laughs> Joining us live from Hollywood, it's Jimmy the Scoop. Please put your hands together for him. Jimmy, we are joined here by the whole team. It's Tosh, Brooke, Zoe and Marty. Uh, if you've got a question for him. Jimmy, can I ask about your marital status? Obviously, you've got away with the women. Yeah, I'm not doing too good, Mr Mooney. OK, uh, look at the camera. Look at the camera, Jimmy, and not me, mate. Uh, <laughs> i got a real it. bad neck problem here, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> good man. So how long have you been reporting, Jimmy? Yeah, not too long, Mr. Mooney. Yeah. But i got time enough to get a scoop on you. Really? What's I hear the scoop? That ju just like George Clooney, you're also married to a young dame who's 16 years younger. That is, in fact, correct. What is a hot tamale like that doing with a rotten tomato like you? <laughs> I often ask her the same question. I think she's in it for the sweet ABC dollars, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, has anyone got a question for Jimmy? I really don't. Jesus. Really? <laughs> Josh, um, Josh, are you scared of... Are you scared of... It's a a bit, no, it's a bit creepy, isn't it? Look, it's hovering. We can't can you, see him. He's in Hollywood. Can, oh, you yeah, know. Please look, look. at that. <laughs> Tosh. Tosh. Why did you think you could see him, Tosh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I've had a lot of drugs yeah. before. Tosh, Tosh is a fascinating for everything, kid. <laughs> so, uh, what is the drug problem like in Hollywood at the moment, Jimmy? Oh, uh, yeah, it's real bad, Mr. Mooney, but I think you'd be a real fan of some of the drugs on the street down here. <laughs> really? And how long do you think you can sustain that terrible accent, Jimmy? <laughs> I think I got about one or two more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jimmy. The scoop! <laughs> this is a question for you, Marty. Yes, who Mark. said, and I quote, mm. you're not a C word. You're an insignificant ass hair. <laughs> and who was that person talking to? So who said you're not a c word? Yeah. You're, you're an, an insignificant, insignificant ass hair. hair. I it know, wasn't Christopher Pine. I know. <laughs> I know it. I know the answer. I do. But I'm gonna let Zoe have a go. <laughs> Gina. Gina. Team Gina. Gina from. 
The Real Housewives of Melbourne. Uh, yes, she in fact said that to whom? To an insignificant ass hair. Yes. And to, she said to it to Andrea Moss. And let's have a look at that particular incident. We even care. care. Insignificant ass hair. <laughs> <laughs> And clearly she wasn't speaking to you, Marty, because no. you are quite a significant ass yeah. <laughs> What a strange group of women they've put together mm. for that show. And uh, obviously they're trying to engender yeah. a bit of cattiness and rivalry. Are you into it, Tosh? I love Gina. My favourite thing about Gina is on the show, it's like she's, she comes up with all of these little jokes in her head and she just does them to herself. Yeah. And so she's got this joke about there's Lydia on the show and she's got this joke about how she always talks about her vagina but she just doesn't tell it to anyone. And so they'll just be talking and she'll just like, they'll be insulting her and she'll just come out with, yeah, why don't you go and wash your vagina? And it's bizarre. <laughs> and everyone's just kind of like, what? Why are you what? saying these yeah. things wow. about her vagina? And she just looks really pleased with herself. She's like, really yes. Really <laughs> Yeah, doing some of my washy vagina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice callback, Gina. Like, she's amazing. Are they coming up with the worst put downs of all time? On yeah, this the show? other one was yeah. the other one. She was like, "Good luck with your pack of cards for your life, because it's gonna crumble. It's all you got. Pack of cards, and then just walked away. Yeah. And it was really shit. I like the earlier one. I, like, I actually like insignificant ass hair, but when you really think about it, it's like mm. it's always significant. Oh, hair on your ass. You've, yeah. got, to, you've, you've got to embrace it. So, uh, these, these women are, you know, being portrayed as villains. Is that the producer's role? Is that an OK thing? We often see it in reality TV. I think, I think they, they try to... Like, that's, that's the whole point of watching these shows, is it lets you hate. And it's like, like the same with reality TV. There has to be a villain there. And it's like, the audience is a giant cock. Um, and it's sort of getting... Hate wanked and hate wanked and hate wanked <laughs> until, until no, eventually, no, no, until, until eventually, like Donald just, Bill B, there is, there is yeah. a level of, yeah. of release. Yeah. They, they yeah. operate yeah. on, it's like blue balls, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the whole show runs on blue balls. What do you mean by hate wanked though? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's like, just all hold hands yeah. and create a ring of light, yeah. shall we? Just oh, I'm not comfortable doing this well, after the conversation. Come on, let's well, <laughs> we should all try hate wanking as well. Now the hate wanking. Oh, what's going There's on? There's hair on my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's move along, shall we? Really, Phil? In what now, way? On to another segment. Oh, okay. Uh, let's just leave that one behind. <laughs> I've, had some, I've had some angry wank. Now this show. <laughs> Um, uh, before we go on, of course, My Kitchen Rules has been a massive juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, let's leave the Real Housewives of, of Melbourne behind. <laughs> my Kitchen Rules, Kelly... Uh... Yeah. I'm just thinking you can really hurt yourself. Oh, if, you're... <laughs> if you're angry enough, you can. Yeah. <laughs> can we... Uh, yes, we can, mate. We're can, moving. Can we please... Yeah, we're going. Come yeah, okay. on, let's go. My Kitchen Rules... <laughs> Uh, Kelly was in the final, she was painted as a villain and she's saying that it is basically ruined her life, yeah. she's broke, yep. she's living with her parents, well. um, they painted it, she's being vilified online and in public mm. and I say, duh Kelly, <laughs> yeah. you went on a reality show you loser. Yeah. <laughs> And you're lost. I mean, yeah. that's but the worst crime some of, of all. These people, like, uh, on these reality shows, I mean, sure they edit it a bit, but some of the things that people do and say on those shows are actually genuinely awful. Like, like on The Real Housewives, not to go back to what you were talking about, but there was the thing, Gina was like really brash and all sorts of things, but she was kind of great. But the other women, I think the thing that everyone found really upsetting about it was that they turned to this horrible, horrible bullying. It's just terrible bullying. And the worst thing was that you could see it was so practiced. It was just really bad behaviour, like just horrible. Is uh, are we happy awful. to are we happy to watch bullying on TV because bullying's been stamped out in society? So we need, yeah. you know, once upon a time you pick on the fat kid at primary school yeah, sure. and that's gone now. So yeah, we yeah. need to see some bullying. Well, yeah. clearly we must because I think scarily enough, mm. a lot of that stuff is actually scripted. They, the producers have an eye for what story might be being told or could be told and they're not adverse to adding fuel to that fire. No. So it'll obviously be the way it's edited. They'll also ask quite often if there's a moment that they want to build, they mm. will script some dialogue and actually get 
unwittingly, or I mean, look, they've gone into a reality show. They shouldn't be that unwitting. But yeah, it, and we've all seen reality. It's not like the first round of Big Brother or something. No. I mean, well, no. see, that was fantastic because yeah. you actually saw human beings completely unaware of mm. their environment. But now it's the manipulators manipulating, being manipulated by the manipulator. Like it's completely yeah. eating well, itself. Let's ask. It's in the I'll tell you what. Well. Why don't we ask Sad Kanye what he thinks? Yeah, what does he reckon? <laughs> let's, uh, let's have a look at Sad Kanye. <laughs> There's Sad Kanye. Yeah, it's worn him down. He's yeah. very upset about bullying. Uh, yeah, he looks like he's been bullied because he's got his helmet on there so he doesn't get poked in the head. You're a bully, Marty. Yeah, in many uh, ways, I am. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it a good feeling to bully? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because you, um, hang you, on, what are you doing? You, you, you drove Fifi box crazy, oh, and did not. you made her have sex with um, an Iron Man, <laughs> didn't you? What? Green room. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. No. Now this show is a great party. Sometimes it runs off the rails, but like the Oscars, the real party is the after party. It's a chance to hang out with famous celebrities, drink like pirates and make some bad life choices. <laughs> this year, I demanded the ABC get me an after-party assistant to help out and let's see who they've got for me tonight. Who have we got in the green room? Take it easy, sweetheart. Hey! hey. 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 I'm so sorry. You are my after-party assistant, Don. How's the party shaping Look, up? Look, extremely well. I know you wanted fairy bread, but it is ABC2, mate. Sorry, we couldn't afford the sprinkles. Oh, no sprinkles. You get the idea, though. You Don, get the idea. what I really want to know is what's tonight's Dirty Laundry Live after-party cocktail? It's a bit of an experiment. We're going with the federal budget Bellini, mate. It's uh, <laughs> one part uh, blatant lies. There's, uh, there's a dash of... Uh, of uh, uh, they call it... Um, Learn your lines, mate. <laughs> Learn your yeah, there's, lines, a, there's, a, there's a little bit of... There's a little... Uh, there's a dash of Joe Hockey's... What, uh, Joe Hockey's sweat. Yeah. Shake that up. Goes very mm. well with a, with a cigar, champ. Good stuff. Now, are the VIPs behaving themselves? Uh, uh, pretty tame, mate. Pretty tame. Not much to report. Uh, Packer and Gingell are still going for it. <laughs> but uh, we've both seen better fights in the backstage of a strip club. I have a... Uh... I have to ask you something. Is your surname hyphenated? Because when I say Don Honey to my wife, she says, yeah. Don Honey, he's sexy. So is that your full name? Uh, well, given my proximity to your wife, mate, I have to say it is hyphenated uh, if that gets her out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it well, that's a revelation. Don, <laughs> do you think you're sexy? Well, it depends who's asking, Lawrence, but since it's you and I could go for you, I would hope so, mate. Uh. <laughs> On yeah. a scale of 1 to 10, Don, what are you thinking? Because I'm an 8.5 and it's you're an clearly... It's an appropriate question for an employee Can to answer. Can you sort out your love life after the show, please? Okay, let's Thank move you. on. You've done the bidding, mate. Uh, let's talk about what's happening in your life. You're currently starring in a new Australian film called The Healing, which, yes. where you play a prisoner who makes friends with an injured beagle. That's an eagle, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a beagle, Don. Uh, now, in Offspring, you killed Asha Ketty's boyfriend, Patrick. <laughs> Is that why you're in prison in this movie? Uh, it's not... Uh, I didn't kill anyone. Yeah, that's what, what they say, Don. Uh, prisons are full of innocent men. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, make us a budget Bellini on ice and I'll see you at the after party. Don Honey! <laughs> see you shortly. What have we learned? Already? Yes! Well, well, well. And it was budget night the other night, and so we are recycling the paper. That's right. It's all part of the cuts and the efficiency. OK, here we go. So, what... OK, are you ready? You ready, know to shout, ready to shout. Ready to shout. Ready, ready, ready. The person who shouts the loudest gets the point, OK? He gets heard, man. Just gets heard. Just, just yell out. Noises? Yell out as oh. loud as you can, OK? No hate wank gear. <laughs> <laughs> no HW. <laughs> Let's just call him HW from now on. OK, matey. It was better for me. That was some. That was some sweet beagle action. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these ladies here? Oh. 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 Who 
Oh, come on, you guys. Okay, okay. okay Don, this is, this is my show. It's not east-west, mate. Get, get back in the green room. What is French for yeah. genital? Um, Solange. Solange. I'll give that to Tosh. Do you mind if I... Uh, no, come no, on in. <laughs> you are so sexy. It's, uh... <laughs> You're not very tall, but you're very... <laughs> <laughs> what does Marty do when he gets into a lift? Pick Picks a shit water! Picks a pink water! <laughs> you're good at this! Go, go, go! Who is one of the great dead shits? Beaver! Beaver! Well, you say that. Run! <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, oh, and what is done, honey's drink? Budget Bunch of Okay. Let's find out who the winner is. Tosh, you are the winner tonight. Oh, well done. <laughs> it's time to go. Please thank Tosh, Zoe, Marty, Brooke, and Don. You've got the chair. <laughs> See you later!